and get my six also. Guys, I have an idea so crazy. that it just might work. Hey guys, if you thought I was two different people or perhaps the same person traveling throughout this space and time continuum, you're wrong, it's just me. Get my six. Here's what we're doing. We are attempting to lure in the potential Bigfoot Sasquatch that may or may not live in the woods behind my home. Yet again, in a very unique way in which we've never done. So, and while we're doing this, yeah, I'm gonna explain to you how we're doing it first, but then I'm gonna actually prove to you that time travel is real. You've been doing it whether you've known it or not, but you've not been doing it for any good purpose. So I'm gonna help, help you stop. Or I'm gonna point you in a direction where you can find help to stop this insane time travel that you do not want to do. So first I'm going to point out three points of reference. <sighs> Look very closely. Here, it appears to be a white line that's actually a yellow piece of engineering tape, which will be removed when I'm finished here before I go in. This is just for reference. There's three. One. There's one over here, two. And I gotta make sure my head's not in the way. There's one right here. Three. Now I'm gonna do my best to stay over here out of your way so you can get my entire six back here. Okay, where? Yeah, I saw it too. But potentially we may see he, she, it, or they pretty much anywhere up here. But particularly those three, three spots because we're doing a bit of gifting. These are very delicious garlic roasted peanuts. One of our friends gave us for Christmas. And I put a handful of these things on the ground beneath each piece of engineering tape, actually on a stump. They're beneath each piece of, of engineering tape. So we are gifting, okay, we're gifting. And now, I'm laying on the ground, look. I'm laying on the ground so that I pose no threat to him, her, it, or they. Perhaps they will be more tempted to come closer. I just heard something. Perhaps they will be more willing to come in and accept our gifts if they view me as less threatening. By the way, the forest behind me is where I made a video um, a little more than a week ago where I actually went into the forest just before dark and, and didn't have a flashlight and then after dark was surrounded by three if not four potential Bigfoot Sasquatch. Walked right up to me. Go back and watch that one. I'll put it at the end of this video in case you miss that. I know a lot of folks have been away from social media for the holidays that just passed. And good for you. Okay, now. I hear footsteps in the leaves in the forest. We may be getting company here really, really soon. So make sure to keep your eyes open. Now, what's up with me shaving half my face? I had a, actually a job interview just before Christmas 
And the people I'd interviewed with a couple months before told me to grow some facial hair because I looked too young. And so I did. And then at the interview, they said I grew too much. They only meant about half as much. So I went into the restroom during the interview, actually, and shaved half of it off. I've mentioned that, and somebody said they would have loved to have seen that. So I did it again intentionally so you could see what I looked like. I thought it was funny. They didn't. I didn't get the job. Some guy named Trevor did. Okay, so anyway, listen, I'm going to reference a book called The Power of Now, written by an author named Eckhart Tolle. I'm not being paid to promote this. You know, I'm an avid reader. I read 50 to 80 books a year. But, and I read this one some time ago. Well, last month or so. Some of you have heard of this book. Some of you have read it because I've actually uh, seen reference to this book in the comments at times. And what str that's what struck my curiosity. And then I know a friend, I know someone personally who, who, read, who read this book years ago and swears by it. So when he talked about it here a couple months ago, I, I went and bought it to read it. But guys, I want to talk to you about time travel, which we all do, whether you know it or not. It's real whether you know it or not. And I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't do it. Okay. Yeah, keep watching. Guys, basically, the, the, the principle of this book and this guy's philosophy, I guess it's like got like a big cult following. And uh, he talks about how so many times as people, as human beings, as Fathers, mothers, wives, husbands, brothers, sisters, children's parents, children, one, parents, uh, co-workers, friends, colleagues, acquaintances, uh, human beings. We spend so much time in the past, either regretting it or reveling in it or projecting into the future, fearful of it or excited about it. And we don't spend enough time in the now. And this is where life really takes place, is in the here and in the now. And this is an entire philosophy on kind of retraining your mind to tune out the noise, uh, tune out the what, what Toll refers to as the pain body, past experiences that weren't so pleasant that at times your mind, your thinking mind will bring up, that will just take you away back into the past uh, all day long if you allow it, if you don't have the tools to stop that from happening, which will cause you to project into the future of all these things that you're just convinced are going to happen. They're going to be terrible. Life's not worth living because of it. None of that's real. The only thing that's real is the here and the now. Those things might have happened. Some things may happen. But what is happening is what's here now. And yeah, you just saw that thing moving and it's not windy out here right now. And why aren't the others moving? Yeah, there's a method to all my madness. Rewind and put your earbuds in. That sounded like voices. There are distinct footsteps in the forest over here this way. If they come closer, I'll twist the camera to where you can see over there. There's something else neat about laying flat on the ground like this. Like, look. It's like the prone position back in the army. I'm very small. I mean, like right now, my head's about 18 inches above the ground. So whatever's walking in the woods over there would have to get to within like 20 feet of me before it could see me. Whereas if I were standing up, all six feet, 190 pounds of chiseled muscle of me, which is not true. I'm like 5'9 and 175 and flab. But... He, she, it, or they would be able to see me from a considerable distance away. Plus, this is a very comfortable position for reading. So, here's a mistake many of us make with time travel in our time machine. Listen to this. Toll writes, 
And this is talking about going back to the past, constantly looking back and allowing it to make us angry, fearful, depressed, okay? He says, to suddenly see that you are or have been attached to your pain can be quite, sh uh, quite a shocking realization. The moment you realize this, you have broken the attachment. Okay, realizing you're doing it is the first step in breaking this attachment to doing it. The pain body, and that's what he refers to, the part of your being that constantly wants to hash out the past or be fearful of the future. You know, Google, what do we have to be scared of in 2020? There are people that live like this, and this is why they're stuck in the pain body, okay? The pain body is an energy field, almost like an entity that has become temporarily lodged in your inner space. It is life energy that has become trapped, energy that is no longer flowing. Of course, the pain body is there because of certain things that happened in the past. It is the living past in you, and if you identify with it, you identify with the past. A victim identity is the belief that the past is more powerful than the present, which is the opposite of the truth. Listen to that line again. How often do any of us get caught up in feeling sorry for ourselves because he, she, it, or they, not the ones that live in the forest behind my home, but the human being kinds, he, she, it, or they, uh, did something to us, wronged us, and we feel entitled to be a victim. Listen, a victim identity is the belief that the past is more powerful than the present, which is the opposite of the truth. It is the belief that, the, that other people and what they did to you are responsible for who you are now, for your emotional pain, or your inability to be your true self. That boss at that job that was always mean to me, that spouse that left me and took half my stuff, or more than half, uh, the parents that mistreated me for ever so long, and I know that's a hard one to get away from, but the truth is that the only power there is contained within this moment is the now. It is the power of your presence. Once you know that, you also realize that you are responsible for your inner space now. Nobody else is. And that the past cannot prevail against the power of now. I know this red circle means something's there. I'm not saying that's a Bigfoot Sasquatch, but I feel that something is there. Gosh, you know what? Attempting to lure in Bigfoot Sasquatch while dealing with time travel all at the same time is somewhat difficult at times. Okay, so now you're asking, hey Crazy Lake, but how do we stop doing that? Wow, I came here for the Bigfoot Sasquatch, but now you're talking to me about me. How do I stop? How do you stop traveling in time? Remain in the present. You wanna know how to do that? Okay, I'm gonna use a word here that's gonna run a lot of folks off. Let me explain how I'm not using it. It's a word called salvation, and this is not in reference to the religious sense or definition of this word. Many words have so many different meanings. Don't let that word run you off, because in this sense, uh, salvation is your state of freedom, your ability to stop traveling in time and going back to the crazy past, fearing the, the future. Who knows what it's going to be? All we know about is the right now. This will get you out of your house. This will get you living again. This will get you taking a chance to have interpersonal relationships with other people. Which is a whole nother ball game. But let me read part of this book to you, and this is going back earlier. Listen to this. I hope this helps. True salvation is a state of freedom from fear, from suffering, from a perceived state of lack and insufficiency, and therefore from all wanting, needing, grasping, and clinging. Wouldn't you like to have that? Guys, I think when I finish this up, we're going to go walk around in the woods for a minute or two. So hold on tight.
It's weird. It's like itchy over here because I need to shave and it's kind of cool over here because I just did. Okay. It is freedom from compulsive thinking. Worrying that, you know, the worst of the absolute worst is definitely going to happen. We have no say in it. And why are we even here? Why even try? Because we know it's going to happen. Okay. Uh, freedom from negativity and above all from past and future as a psychological need. Your mind is telling you that you cannot get there from here. Something needs to happen or you need to become this or that before you can be free and fulfilled. You need to get that promotion at your job. You need to find that perfect person to make you whole, etc., etc. It is saying, in fact, that you need time that you need to find, sort out, do, achieve, acquire, become, or understand something before you can be free or complete. You see time as the means to salvation, whereas in truth it is the greatest obstacle to salvation. You think that you can't get there from where, where and who you are at this moment because you are not yet complete or good enough, but the truth is that here and now is the only point from where you can get there. You get there by realizing that you are there already. Oh, here comes another word. It's going to scare you off. Don't let it. I'm going to, it's the G word. I'm going to replace it with higher power. Okay. You find your higher power the moment you realize that you don't need to seek a higher power. So there is no only way to salvation. Any condition can be used, but no particular condition is needed. However, there is only one point of access, the now. There can be no salvation away from this moment. You are lonely and without a partner? Enter the now from there. You are in a relationship? Enter the now from there. I think those are two sentences that kind of mean accept it. Be where you are. Be who you are. Realize you are not your past. That's what's behind you. You are not your future. And I'm quoting Sir Oliver Wendell Holmes here, uh, Supreme Court Justice of the U.S., the first part of the 1900s. What's important is what is within you, and that is the now. Stay in the now. Stop your crazy time traveling, okay? It's not windy out here. That thing is flapping around like crazy, and yet the other two are not. And that's why I'm hearing the footsteps. Let's sneak up on them. I did something in a video yesterday that somebody said they really enjoyed. I flipped the phone and I showed you my view as I walked up on things. I'm going to do that right now. Yep, that's what I've been staring at the whole time I've been laying here. See, here's my tripod and here's my stuff. Well, you guys got to see that. And this. I was staring at wood. All right, but now over here's where I'm hearing footsteps. I'm going to not talk for a little bit. And I know you think I can't do that, but watch, I can. And we're gonna see what's over there. Crazy, I didn't see anything over there. Neither did I. Rewind and listen to that. And the footsteps stopped. Well, I hope you guys and girls got something out of our little reading today, and I hope you saw something in the background creeping up on the gifts. Wow, did you just see that? It looked like it ran and hid behind a tree. 
If you saw anything else running and hiding behind trees today, please leave your timestamps and what you thought he, she, it, or they were or was. And we'll see you for more next time here at the PBS. S. The potential Bigfoot Sasquatch. Show.